Hello everybody. Hey, this is John Fenn, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I.org. I encourage you to go to our website. There you can sign up for my weekly thoughts, which is a weekly email. It comes out on Friday mornings, U.S. time. Also, my monthly e-newsletters. Those are the places I put prophetic words, where our meetings are, when our next Zoom uh, web meeting is, stuff like that. So you'll need to sign up for that to be able to get those. C-W-O-W-I.org. We're a worldwide house church network. Going through the process of discipleship and celebrating the the home-based church, family-based church, the way they did it in the New Testament, when absolutely, when possible at all, rotating homes and rotating who leads each week. Um, very much like a large family and a family of faith, household of faith gathering. Uh, usually Acts 2.42 is what we follow, food, fellowship, teaching, and uh, and prayer. Uh, worship. So Acts 2.42 is that guideline. But anyway, going on, this is all about the discipleship process. So today, saying, making this statement that all prayer requests go to the Father and w how prayer works. And a lot of people don't understand this. <clears throat> when I was a teenager, we met, uh, when I was in high school, we met on Thursday nights in a uh, basement of a church and a group of us teenagers would get together, we'd have prayer and worship, etc. And had been going for a couple of years at this point. And another teenager from another school, she pulled me aside. She said, I want to talk to you. And she, we sat down and she said this. She said, I noticed that all your prayers get answered. Whatever you pray, it gets answered. I've seen people healed. I've seen answered prayer, etc." She said, whenever I pray, nothing happens. I, I just feel powerless. There's, you know, it's hit and miss. And I said, well, let's, let's spend some time in prayer and let's, and why don't you start off and, and just let's pour your heart out to the Father and let's see. So the first thing she does is she goes, it's Jesus, I ask and I just stopped right there. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, I listened to her a little bit. And I said, then I stopped her. I said, okay. I said, that's your problem right there. You're asking Jesus for things. And that's in direct disobedience to him. And she was like, you could have hit her, you know, with a wet noodle and knocked her over. I mean, she just, you, she had no idea we weren't supposed to make prayer requests to Jesus. And, and so I want to share chapter and verse and the why of that, because there's so many Christians out there who are praying to Jesus, asking him things in direct disobedience to Jesus. And then they wonder why they're so powerless or why prayer is hit and miss. Now, sometimes the Father and his great graciousness uh, and, and the need of the person through mercy and grace, of course, he's going to answer prayer. But mechanically, legally, spiritually, uh, there's a reason we ask the Father. Now, Jesus himself said to pray this way, our Father in heaven, your name is holy. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now that right there is the is the key right there to understand. The Father God has a will, has a desire, has something that he wants done in the earth. Let your will be done on earth as it's in heaven. So he wants his will in heaven to be communicated and done, accomplished here on the earth. That's Jesus setting up that, the mechanics of that. And you have to understand why is that? Why would Jesus say that? Why in John 16, 23, did Jesus say, talking of the time of after his cross and resurrection, why would he say, in that day, you'll ask me nothing, but you'll ask the Father in my name. And I don't say that I'm going to intercede for you because the Father himself loves you and is glorified when you have answered prayer, when you bring forth much fruit, when you prosper and do well. So why would Jesus say in John 16, 23, in that day, you'll ask me nothing, but you'll ask the Father. The reason for that is it goes back to the mechanics of what he said. You pray our Father, and then he has a will that wants to be done on earth. So we have to understand something, that the Lord delegated the responsibility of the earth to mankind. Therefore, God works by invitation, largely. I mean, he retains the rights as creator. And that's why the book of Revelation is so full of, of creation going crazy. A double asteroid hit and different stuff like that going on during the last seven years. Because he retains his rights, certainly, as creator and a creator of, of man, creator of nature. But, but because we have free will, he operates by and large by, by our request. In other words, he doesn't just barge into somebody's life. He has a desire from heaven to, to minister, to, to serve, to, to provide in somebody's life, but he asks, has to ask by, he operates by invitation. And you can think of this in your own life. If you, uh, you know, you're a believer, I mean, you could have gotten saved, quote unquote, you could have gotten to know the Lord maybe years earlier. 
But, uh, you know, when you started thinking, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What is this emptiness on the inside that I feel? And you began searching him. That was giving him the legal access to enter into your life to eventually bring you to Jesus. But it wasn't until you started pondering these things and, and, and seeking these things that he, that he started uh, teaching you and reaching out to you. So the mechanics are this. The Father has his will on, in heaven, and he wants it done on earth. We see this in Matthew 3.16 in the... Uh, baptism of Jesus, how the Father spoke from heaven, the Holy Spirit came down and landed upon Jesus. So you have the Father through the Spirit to Jesus and now the body of Christ. So you have to understand the flow is that the Holy Spirit is both in heaven and on earth. And that's why Jesus said in John 16, 12 and 13, Jesus said, I've got many more things to say to you, but you can't grasp them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth because he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that's what he will speak and he'll show you things to come. What Jesus is saying is, I from heaven, I'm going to have a lot of more things to say to you, but you can't grasp them. However, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will speak not of himself whatever he hears, only whatever he hears. So the Holy Spirit's role is to search the heart of the Father God and the Lord Jesus and communicate that to us. The Holy Spirit being both in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory, and also in heaven. The Father is seated in his throne in heaven. Jesus has ascended and he is in heaven. He's in the spirit realm, in his glorified body, but still in the spirit realm. And and so the Holy Spirit is the one who is both in heaven and on earth, in us. And so Paul elaborates on this. He expands on this a little bit in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 16. He quotes Isaiah, and he starts out in verse 9. He says this, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the imagination of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Now, when Paul is writing the word God, he means the Father God. And we know this through numerous letters that he wrote. Ephesians 1.1 1, 1 is a great uh, example where he says, Grace and mercy, peace be unto you from God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father. So we know that's consistent with Paul. When he says the word God, he's meaning our Father. And so that's why he says in, in 1 Corinthians 2.9, uh, quoting that, I has not seen, neither has ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared, the Father has prepared for those that love him. However, God has revealed these things to us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of the Father God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit which is in him? Even so, nobody knows the thoughts of the Father God except the Holy Spirit. And we have received not the Spirit of the world, but we've received the Spirit of God so that we can know the things that are freely given to us by God. And so Paul is laying out there that the reason we have the Holy Spirit is that he is searching the heart of the Father God to see what's prepared for us. And you see this pattern throughout that, that every single prayer in the New Testament is to the Father. It's not to, to Jesus. Every request, does Jesus get worship? Yes. Does the Holy Spirit get worship and glory? Yes, of course. Part of the Godhead. But as far as a request I'm talking about, we make that request to the Father God. Paul said in, in uh, Philippians chapter 4, uh, if you look at verses 6, 7, and 8, he says, he says, be careful, be anxious, be fearful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request made known to God. And when you do that, the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. That is, deal with your fear and your worries first before you ever open your mouth. I learned that years ago. Deal with the fear and worries, even if it takes you a week or two to deal with the fear and worry, and then make your request known to the Father God. And then the peace of God will come upon you. Uh, Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1.17, I pray the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14, 15, 16, he says this, I, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you by his spirit to be strengthened in your inner man. Every prayer in the New Testament, Paul, in, in Acts chapter 4, when Peter and John are released and go back to the, their own people from verses 24 on through about 30, 31, he says, as God, Lord God, who made heavens and earth and everything there in there, look at how they're threatening us. And we ask that, that, and look how they crucified your child, Jesus. And then he concludes the prayer saying, we ask that you stretch forth your hands to heal by the name of your holy child, Jesus. So there you've got Peter, you've got numerous instances in Paul, you've got Jesus' own instructions to pray, our Father in heaven, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, you, you've got Jesus saying, in that day, you'll ask me nothing. We make our request to the Father because he is the source. 
James chapter 1, verse 13 says, Let nobody say when he's tested that God's doing it to him. God's not tested by evil, neither does he test anyone with evil. And he goes on down, he says, he says, But everyone's drawn away of their own ungodly desires and enticed. And then when the desire and the enticing can meet together, they conceive sin. Sin, if it has its absolute finish, brings forth death. And he says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Now, see, again, James is saying, so you got Peter, you got Paul, you got James, you know, you, you've got them all saying the same thing, that the Father God is the source of it all, and the Holy Spirit is searching his heart, searching to see what he has for us. And so we ask the Father, and the Holy Spirit gets that word from the Father and communicates it to our spirit, because the Holy Spirit is both in heaven and on earth. That when you get a peace about something, when you're praying, you say, Father, show me this or reveal your provision. And suddenly you have a peace that is taken care of, even if your mind doesn't know what it is. You've got that peace, however. What happens is this, that Holy, the Holy Spirit is searching the heart of the Father God. He knows, he hears, as Jesus said, he won't speak of himself, but whatever he hears, he hears what the Father God has for you. He gives you that peace down on the inside. Hey, it's taken care of. He is the eyewitness in heaven. He is the eyewitness on earth. And so that is why we don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We don't ask Jesus for things. We ask the Father and the Holy Spirit who is in us and in him, and He, it is his spirit, knows his thoughts, knows his innermost desires for us and his will, and then he communicates that down to us. Run, one quick thing. This is why tongues, this is how tongues work. Um, I received a lot of this through visitation, and I'm just, I'm just teaching you all the same thing. But when I asked the Lord, why tongues? You know, why it's so, so controversial. And he said this. And I'm shortening this just for the time's sake. But he said, he said, you don't know how to pray as you should. That's Romans 8, 26. The Holy Spirit helps our infirmities, for we don't know how to pray as we should. All I can do is pray for somebody to the extent of my knowledge. And after that, I really don't know what's going on in their heart, in their lives, in their minds, what they're struggling with. You know, I, I really don't know. So the, what he explained to me was the Father God had to find a way legally to get his will done on earth. But he had to find a way to bypass a uh, man's infirmity of not knowing how to pray. So the Father God provides a language from heaven that he pours forth with, with his content, his will, into our spirit, and then we pray it back. Because we didn't learn that language, the Father can fill it with his knowledge and his perfect will, and then we pray that back to him. It completes a legal transaction. His will in heaven can be done on earth, and we pray that will back to him that gives him legal access into our lives or into the lives of those that we're praying for. And, and that's how it works, folks. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. Visit us at cwowi.org. There's articles, web, uh, video, uh, information about house church and home-based church, the biblical balanced home-based church, lots of other things. Sign up for my weekly thoughts. We're all about the discipleship process, a lifelong process of implementing the ways of God into our lives. Hope it's been a blessing. Talk to you later. cwowi.org.